Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since I uploaded, but I wanted to do an updated video to go over my hypervisor setup and my migration from VMware to XCP and Zen Orchestra. So if you've seen my previous videos, you will know that I used to run my setup in ESXi and vSphere. I, I used to have three ESXi hosts, then I ran a vSphere over that for the management system. But with the recent changes to uh, VMware and vSphere, uh, with the recent acquisition by Broadcom, that has uh, caused me to have to look for other options to move away from them as I was using their free version of vSphere. So if you haven't already heard, uh, Broadcom has bought out VMware and they are, uh, well, they put out an end of general availability for the free vSphere hypervisor. Uh, so I was weighing my uh, options between a uh, Zen Orchestra and XCPNG with a few other options like Proxmox, uh, but decided to go with uh, Zen and XCPNG uh, as it fit my needs better for uh, my infrastructure. Now that might be different for you, maybe Proxmox is a better solution, but this is what worked best for me. So I want to do a a video going over the pros and the cons and then uh, some of the issues that I ran into when uh, attempting to migrate over from vSphere. Uh, so let's get into the pros first. Uh, I would say XCPNG is pretty easy to familiarize yourself with. You know vSphere and ESXi they have entire courses that you can take to learn their product uh, but with Zen Orchestra and XCPNG, I felt like it was pretty easy to understand everything and immediately dive into and uh, go through all the different settings and see what there is. You know, it has a pretty clean layout. Uh, it's easy to understand uh, where everything is. If you go to home, that will show all of your virtual machines. Uh, you have your hosts, you have your pools. Uh, you can have templates and storage. Uh, and you have a dashboard that will give you an overview of your entire system. Uh, so I, I think it's a pretty clean layout and I know that they are going to be making future changes as well to Zen Orchestra with uh, version 6. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but another thing that I liked is that it's open source. So hopefully we don't see the uh, issues that we are seeing now with uh, vSphere. Uh, and hopefully uh, this will stay open source and, and free to use for as long as we need to. Uh, one of the next uh, pros that I have found when using this system is a built-in backup solution. Uh, so built right into uh, the Zen Orchestra is a backup uh, backup tab and you can set up you know nightly backups, weekly backups. Uh, it's pretty easy to uh, to make a new backup schedule. Uh, if we edit this one here, you can see that it's a regular backup that uh, in the schedules that occurs weekly and I, it has all of my virtual machines in here. So that was pretty nice. You know, I used to ran, run a VM, V-E-E-A-M, as my backup solution, but I was able to take down that virtual machine since there is a backup solution built right in. Saves a little resources on the back end, so that's nice there. And as far as I can tell, it works pretty well. Uh, you can set it up to email new notifications if a uh, backup fails, which is nice. And so far, it's been working really well. I do have a uh, one failed here, uh, failed system here for a Delta backup that I haven't uh, quite dug into uh, as of yet, but did transfer a, a lot of data over. So looks like it got close to completed. But anyway. I'll, I'll have to look into that a little bit later, but I, you know, I think uh, Zen Orchestra it has a lot of great features, and I also think that there is uh, a lot of potential with this system. Uh, you know, they keep making it better with every update, so I'm excited to see uh, where they take this system. Uh, that's enough for the pros, though. Let's get into the cons uh, that I don't like about this system. Um, so one of the uh, things I've noticed is there is no web interface for each host. So back on vSphere ES6i, you know, you'd be able to go to 
the uh, web interface of each host and log into ESXi and you would get an overview of the uh, VMs that are on that system. Uh, with XCPNG, you don't really have that. I'll go ahead and sign into one of my hosts here. And this is the screen that pops up. Um, you know, you can't manage the system at all from here. It just uh, has a plug to, on how to deploy Zen Orchestra and how to buy their pro support. But not a big deal, you know, as an orchestra, it was easy to uh, to set up and manage. And there actually is a uh, pr a desktop program that you can install. Uh, I believe it's just called XCP NG Center. And if you open that up, you can manage all of your virtual machines right in the Windows uh, Windows application. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up here to uh, kind of show you what what it is and how it's set up. Uh, so in here. You know, it has that treated structure. You have your cluster, and then you have your three nodes in here. And then you have all your data stores that are uh, on the side of that. Uh, so uh, another con that I've noticed, you know, there's no tiered tree within the actual web interface like there is in the uh, the application here. You know, I like how it has uh, this tiered tree. You have your cluster. You open up your node, and you have all of your uh, all of your virtual machines right there you know it's pretty easy to understand going out in that tree structure now I do understand that there will be uh, upcoming changes to this with uh, with Zen Orchestra version 6 so I'll go ahead and move over to uh, this blog post by uh, Zen Orchestra about the new layout that version 6 will have so it does have the tree structure so I'm definitely looking forward to this it looks a lot cleaner uh, Hopefully that will be uh, rolling out soon. I don't have any details of a timeline or anything like that, but that is something to look forward to. Uh, next con that I would say is, you know, I built my system from sources. I didn't use uh, their system to deploy it or anything like that because I don't need the, the pro support that comes along with that and to pay, you know, a monthly fee. So I built this from sources and I would say the biggest annoyance is all of the paywalls. Uh, so right off the bat, you know, when you open up Zen Orchestra, this is the first thing that will pop up. It says that you were uh, using Zen Orchestra from sources and to buy their appliance with pro support. And then the other thing, you know, you have this, uh, once you close out of that window, you have another banner that says that your system is not bundled with uh, support nor updates. And then, you know, there are multiple settings within here that you go to and it has no functionality because I didn't buy the pro version. So that's just more of an annoyance. You know, if you built this from sources, I don't understand why all that is there. And I do understand that I can go into the code myself and remove that. But why have it there in the first place? I can understand, you know, maybe just one banner, but having multiple things, you know, and multiple settings areas that are restricted because you haven't paid for their uh, pro support. You know, I, I don't like that within the hypervisor, but you have to make money. I understand that. Uh, next issue or con that I've noticed is Active Directory integration. You know, it doesn't seem to be very easy. There is a way to configure in your LDAP settings under L, under settings and then uh, plugins. You can configure LDAP, uh, but I have not yet been able to get it to work as well as I would like it to. Um, you know, vSphere, it makes it pretty easy with uh, connecting to Active Directory. You just enter in your domain, your username, your password, log in, you can choose what groups that you want to allow you know, that makes it super nice, uh, but there's no option for that, as far as I can tell, within Zen Orchestra. I may be wrong, but, you know, I haven't found anything yet. And that kind of leads into the next, uh, I don't know if it is much of an issue, but I would say that it's a concern, is that, you know, there is not a whole lot of KB articles for Zen Orchestra yet. You know, there, there's... 
there's some out there and they have helped me but it's nothing like uh, vSphere and uh, VMware how they have a KB article for essentially every single issue possible uh, so that's been kind of a learning curve you know if I run into an issue it has been kind of hard to track down and figure out exactly how to fix it but you know, that's just one thing to look look out for if you were going to be migrating over. Uh, so the next uh, issue I want to talk about is uh, no hardware key MFA support. Now vSphere didn't have this either, but you know I'd like to see this come to uh, Zen Orchestra eventually. I use hardware keys for my multi-factor authentication, and I've not found a way yet to uh, set this up within Zen Orchestra or if it's even possible. So if it's not possible. It'd be great to see a, uh, a release in the future uh, with that support, but we'll cross our fingers. Uh, the next con that I wanted to go over is actually the page where I'm at now with the plugins. You know, I don't really understand the concept of the plugins here. You know, there are a lot of these uh, built-in plugins that you can uh, configure for like backup reports and load load balancing or uh, alert alerts uh, based on performance, but I don't really understand why it's under a plugins tab. You know, it, it made it pretty hard to actually find where these uh, settings were at. You know, I feel like a lot of these settings could go over under uh, different options here on the side, like at the backup report, should go into backups, load balancing should probably go under pools, and then, you know, performance alert notifications, maybe in the virtual machine tabs. But the plugins thing just did not make sense to me at all. It, it was a little bit of a learning curve to actually understand how all of this works. And it makes no sense to me why it's called uh, plugins for all of these items that are you know, just built into the system. But anyway, I think that's enough for me uh, rambling about cons. I want to get into a few of the issues that I ran into when uh, migrating over from VMware. Uh, so I wrote down a few issues here. Uh, the first um, issue I want to go over is the VMware migration tool that is built into Zen Orchestra. Now this is a uh, pretty new uh, feature as I understand that allows you to import directly from VMware. Now for whatever reason, maybe it was the way that my virtual machines were configured within VMware, but I was only to import, able to import three virtual machines successfully. Uh, the rest of my virtual machines I was not able to use this tool. What I ended up having to do was uh, export the virtual machines and then import them using this VM tab uh, by importing the OVA tool or the OVAs. And all I did to export the uh, virtual machines from vSphere was I downloaded the, uh, the VMware OVA export tool. I'll leave a link to the uh, guide that I followed on how to do that below. But it was pretty easy. It did have uh, a little bit of downtime, but that wasn't too big of a deal. Uh, each virtual machine, you know, took maybe about an hour, maybe less to import. Um, you know, none of my virtual machines have like a, a whole lot of storage. I think the highest storage that one of my virtual machines will have is like 130 gigabytes. So they're really not that much, but you know. That's something to look out for and you know as time progresses I'm sure this uh, from VMware migration tool will uh, continuously get better you know I was reading the forums and it did seem like uh, they're making some progress on it so hopefully uh, that will work for uh, the rest of you out there if you decide to move over to Zen Orchestra as well uh, the next issue that I had was uh, well I wouldn't really consider an issue but more of an expected uh, issue when migrating was uh, I run all my virtual machines and I host them on a iSCSI share. Um, so I have a TrueNAS system set up that uh, runs my iSCSI share and then I connect that into, uh, I connect it into vSphere. Now it's connected as an orchestra. And the problem with uh, running in iSCSI shares is, you know, when you do move from one system to another, you end up having to wipe that drive. Uh, so what I ended up having to do when I migrated over is I set up a temporary NFS share and then I would migrate all of the virtual machines in and put them on that temporary NFS share. And then once I had everything migrated over, 
I then wipe the iSCSI share and attached it onto Zen Orchestra. And then I migrated all of my virtual machine uh, data stores back onto the iSCSI share. So that was pretty easy to do. You know, on the disk tab of your virtual machine, there's a little migrate button under the or next to uh, the, the disk. And when you click that, you're able to just choose a destination a data store and migrate that over pretty quick. You know, most of these only took maybe 20 minutes or so to migrate over, so it wasn't terribly slow at all. And you were able to keep you know your virtual machines running while it was doing that. Uh, next issue that I ran into is a clustering and the physical network ports. Um, so on my infrastructure, I have a Dell R620 and then I have two Dell R420s as my hosts or I guess uh, nodes within my system. So the problem with that is the Dell R620, it has four uh, gigabit network ports and then two 10 gig network ports. So I pulled up this picture here. It has uh, four built-in uh, gigabit network ports and then I have a, a card for a 10 gig network port and that has two slots. Uh, so that causes, you know, this is on port zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then uh, for the Dell R420, it only has two built-in one gig network ports. And then I have my uh, 10 gig net card, which has two ports. So X is zero, one, two, three. Now, when I first built this up, I was migrating each uh, server at a time. So I started with the R420s. I got those in and then I maybe prematurely, I created a, uh, a network, uh, a bonded network between port two and three, which were the two 10 gig net cards or two 10 gig NIC slots. And I didn't really understand the implications of that at the time until I added in my Dell R620. And when I added that into the cluster, it tried to use port two and three. Now, if we go back to here, port two and three were this one gig, these two one gig ports. So I was trying to use those instead of my 10 gig NIC. And there is no easy way that I found to be able to uh, change those NICs over, you know, based on each machine. You know, that was something that was pretty easy in uh, vSphere, but it was not easy within uh, Zen Orchestra. I did find a article on the uh, XCPNG site that shows you how to rename the NICs and reassign the MAC addresses assigned to each NIC uh, to be correct. So I, I ended up having to SSH into the Dell R620. I then uh, modified all those settings for the NICs to reassign port uh, my 10 gig ports as port 2 and 3. So it took a little bit of time. I'll leave a link to that article below as well. In the case that you run into the uh, same issue, you can find a way uh, to work through that. But that's just something to note if you have different uh, different systems that are going to be running in a cluster. Uh, the next issue that I came into is uh, network locking. So on each of your virtual machines, you will have a uh, the network tab. I have this uh, network lock on here. Now, I didn't understand that at first. You know, that's probably my own fault for not researching it further. But when I was importing the VMs, I just uh, took a look at this and I was at allowed IP addresses. And I was like, okay, I'll add in the uh, IP address of the system. Well, that ended up causing issues for me because none of my uh, virtual machines ended up being accessible at all. And I realized after I migrated all my virtual machines over that the network on each machine had to be reconfigured. So that caused me to have to, you know, just go into the console, reassign the static IP addresses in there to the new uh, network interface card that I found, and then I was good to go. On Ubuntu machines, I had to uh, actually go into the console, go into the network configurations, and uh, in VMware, when you deploy an Ubuntu VM, it makes the network called ENS160. And in Zen Orchestra, I found that it was called uh, ETH0. 
So I had to change that over in the uh, settings of each of my virtual machines. Uh, it did take some time. I should have probably done that before I started migrating virtual machines out of uh, VMware and over to this, but it was something I did after the fact. It worked fine, but you know, it just took a little bit of extra time to work through and change all of those settings. And then the next issue that uh, I came into was uh, load balancing and I felt like the documentation was not great on load balancing across a cluster. So if we go back into the settings, plugins, and we come down here to uh, load balance, they have these uh, plans that you can set up and there's uh, three different modes. There is a performance mode, a density mode, and a simple mode. Now the performance mode, that is the option that you want to choose if you want to uh, have all of your virtual machines load balanced across your, you know, in my case, three systems so that each system is using the same amount of uh, performance. Uh, that didn't really uh, make sense to me when I was trying to configure this, uh, and I accidentally chose uh, density mode. And what density mode does is it puts all of your virtual machines, it tries to put all your virtual machines on like one host. Uh, and I can see the cases for that if you would like to maybe shut down a host at certain times of the day, everything will migrate over to uh, one virtual machine and you have that ability to just shut down one host. Uh, but you know that didn't make sense to me uh, too much but I ended up getting it figured out. And then simple mode, I still don't fully understand what that does. As I understand it's not even, it doesn't even do any load balancing. So I don't understand why it's an option on your load balancing. It doesn't really make sense, but maybe someone can explain that to me. But you can uh, add in hosts here that you want to exclude from it and add, add in uh, anti-infinity tags, which I'm uh, not really sure what that actually does, but that's something I'll have to look into for sure. Uh, but as far as that goes, I think that is the, uh, the full overview of the pros and the cons and the issues that I ran into during my migration. And hopefully that helps uh, someone else out, out there if uh, you are also thinking about migrating over uh, from VMware to Zen Orchestra. If you have any questions, you know, leave a comment down below. I'll hopefully be able to uh, do more videos uh, soon. I know it's uh, been probably over a year since I uploaded my last video, but hopefully I can get back into it and uh, start making more videos. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, again, if you have any questions, leave them down below. We'll talk to you next time.